circle of rap back and I'm going there leaving tracks in morning and I don't give a crap whether you stream or you torn this you can try to contest but you'll be needing an army beat them in Normandy current rappers to the warning so this absolute mad lad started a brouhaha on Twitter because he said Eddie Guerrero was a B plus player and people only really speak highly of him because he died. I love absolute insane wrestling takes. I love them. I love provocative stuff. You know, this is a very provocative issue. And it's crazy because I was already thinking about doing something like this with Chris Jericho. So I just wanted to talk about this. So this is going to be interesting. I'll try to be as honest as I can on this channel. Eddie Guerrero, phenomenal performer. Could talk, could wrestle, could do anything on the card that you needed him to do. The issue is, the question is, is Eddie Guerrero a B-plus player? The answer to that question is yes. Um, now, what does that mean? I have also called CM Punk and Daniel Bryan B-plus players. Uh, but here's the thing. Rick Rude is a B-plus player. Kurt Hanning is a B-plus player. Scott Hall is a B-plus player. Ted DiBiase is a B-plus player. Uh, there's a lot of them. A lot of guys who we would rank as being some of the greatest of all time. They're not A, a players or even A-plus players. When you talk about A-plus players, you're talking about centerpieces of the entire business. You're talking rarefied air. You're talking about guys who can draw money with or without the belt that can draw money pretty much anywhere. I'm, I'm just, you're talking about guys. Some of them are so old. If I said names, you wouldn't know them. I'm talking Hogan. I'm talking Bruno, gorgeous George, buddy Rogers. Those are like a plus players. When I think of a plus players, I think of people that you can put them anywhere on the card. You talk about the rock and Steve Austin. We could talk about how great Eddie is. We can never say Eddie Guerrero could have been the rock. It's just not possible, right? It's just not possible because The Rock, you know, if you look at in ring, Eddie would blow The Rock away. In ring could sell better than The Rock, you know, could definitely chain wrestle better than The Rock. His work made more sense than The Rock's. His execution was much better. The Rock was a sloppy performer. But if you put Eddie Guerrero's face on a poster here, and The Rock's face over a poster here on the other side. Which show is people going to go see? Zzz, they're going to see The Rock. And that's the difference between an A-plus player and a B-plus player. Is The Rock, he can wrestle anybody. And it can be considered the main event. It doesn't matter who it is because people are coming to see The Rock. That's when you get to that point And people are tuning in regardless of your opponent. You're becoming an A or an A-plus player. When you're a B plus player, you're you can fit in that mold, but you're usually being brought up by somebody else. All right. I look at it this way. I look at it like the like the NBA. Right? The NBA, there's five positions. Your center, your power forward, your small forward, your point guard, and your shooting guard. Right? Each one has their own role on the court. And once you've got a, one guy who can do all of those things, that's your team. Everybody else is on the bench and you can still be on the bench and still be a very, very, very good player, but you're on the bench. You're coming off the bench. That's the B plus side of it, you know, and the deeper you go onto the bench, the worse it is. But when you look at a guy, like I said, a name earlier, Kurt Henning, right? Kurt Henning could do anything, but when you look at how Kurt Henning, what position on the in a wrestling show, would he play? And is there anybody who can do what he does, but do it better and probably draw more money? Absolutely. Randy Savage, for instance. So if Randy Savage is one of your top guys and you're putting his face on posters, then that makes Kurt Henning the B plus player because he can do some of what Randy can do, but Randy can do what Randy can do and Randy can draw. So it's a different, it's a different level of, a different level of, I don't want to say talent, it's a different level of analysis, different level of understanding of 
what guys' positions on these cars are. Now, when the guy said this stuff about, you know, people only love Eddie because he died, that's bullshit. But, that is absolute bullshit. But, but, I will say this. I was not watching wrestling when Eddie Guerrero won the title. But I was a lapsed fan that was following on the message boards. And I can tell you unequivocally, the amount of Eddie Guerrero slander I saw on those boards, unparalleled. Unparalleled. It, it, you know what? And it wasn't much different when you talk about CM Punk or Daniel Bryan. It's a bunch of people who say, why is this mid Carter the world champion? That That's really pretty much what it was. He's a mid Carter. Why is this mid Carter the champion? This sucks. It's going to kill the business. You know, it's it was a lot of that same rhetoric. And I'm pretty sure if you go back and look, you could probably find it. Because I'm not making it up, <laughs> you know. Because I love Eddie, but people, you know, were kind of ambivalent about Eddie. They didn't see him like Rock, like Austin, because they shouldn't, like Undertaker. They shouldn't. He's not on that tier. So they know they didn't see him that way. And guess what? They didn't see Chris Jericho that way either. So when when these guys finally did break through, they were considered high level B plus players. You know, that's that's all. They're role players. Hey, we need somebody to fill in the main events from here to here. Put Jericho in there. He's not the first thought. He might be the second. You know, put Jer or Jericho hasn't had a run at the top in a while. Put him in there. You know, then some some idiot decides, hey, this role player at 48 years old is going to be the centerpiece of my promotion. And this is where I was going to make the video anyway. Because I, I had made a comment on uh, on Jim Cornette's channel. About how I miss Chris Jericho. And I miss Chris Jericho being fun, being interesting, you know, just being a guy on the car. He didn't have a lot of responsibility. You know, we could just enjoy Chris Jericho being Chris Jericho in WWF. Because there were so many other people who are above him. Doing all this, doing everything that, you know, that they do. The Cenas, the Batistas, the Undertakers. Those guys who are have different roles on the game, and you got Chris Jericho. He's going to be on the card. It's not a question about whether he's going to be on the card or not. He's going to be there. But is he going to be doing something important or not? Because that's always been the issue. You know, sometimes Jericho is very important. He's near the main event. Sometimes Jericho's in a tag team doing nothing. That's part of being a role player. Is that you, they put you everywhere. Boop, 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 boop. They put you everywhere. You see, they don't do that shit to John Cena. John Cena don't get put in nothing tag teams in the middle of the fucking card. He's always in the main event. He can wrestle people who are not wrestlers and be in the main event. He literally did it. He wrestled John Laurinaitis, was in the main event of the show. CM Punk was the champion, was not in the main event. Because CM Punk is a B-plus player compared to John Cena. And that's not a knock on CM Punk. I think people take these things, they take them personally. It's not. You can be a Hall of Famer coming off the bench. You can be an excellent performer. You, that's not a denigration. It is just a recognition that there are other people who can do what you do and more. That's all it is. I can't see anybody will, will look at me and say, you're wrong. Eddie could do everything. I'm like, well, Eddie really couldn't draw. And sure, he drew the, the Latino market. I even did some a little bit of digging to find out. That, but of course, the first time a Latino world champion appears since fucking Pedro, of course, people are going to start paying attention. And there's already a a big market for Hispanic, um, a big Hispanic audience for SmackDown. But when you look at everybody else, they're kind of like, eh, we like Eddie. Of course, people like Eddie. So it wasn't a question of whether people like Eddie or not. It's about whether people like Eddie enough to pay for shows where Eddie Guerrero was in the main event. That's the difference. Sure, they will cheer when Eddie Guerrero's music hits. When he comes out, when he does his little shimmy, when he does the three amigos, everybody's going to cheer. But when they go and they got their last 20 bucks in their hand and they say, you know, this comes from the movie Temptations. Do I stay home or do I Buy a ticket to go see Eddie Guerrero. And so a lot of people say, well, I'll stay home. Okay. That's the same way I'm thinking about this thing. There are people 
who are willing to spend $40 on a John Cena t-shirt would not buy an AEW pay-per-view. That's just $10 more. Would not buy it. Will pay absolutely for a John Cena t-shirt. Buy the headband, buy the action figures, everything. Have their kid decked out in Cena. We'll love, we'll still be tripping out. Yay, we love AEW. Won't drop that $50 on it. You know, TNA had that too. You know, TNA had that issue where there was people coming into the into the arena chanting TNA during Raw and chanting TNA during WrestleMania. I was there for that. Were they buying the pay-per-views? Nope. And that's why TNA is in the position that it's in. Because it was a company built around B-plus players. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can make a good crew of B-plus players. And you have to pay them well. And you have to, you know, of course, rotate and bring in more guys. But all of them are just B-plus players. AJ Styles was one, you know. And you could tell that's the way they treated them. You know, just look at how they treated them. When Ric Flair came in, they put AJ Styles on a Ric Flair robe. They didn't see AJ Styles as a star. They saw him as a top guy out of all the top guys. Jeff Jarrett was also a B-plus player, despite the fact that they kept him in the main event. You know, because it, it was just, it's a different level of celebrity. It's a different level of recognition. Not everybody can be the centerpiece of a promotion. Not everybody can be the top guy. And it's okay. It's okay for you not to be the top guy. Because all the guys that I mentioned so far, I am a, or I am or was a huge fan of. Mr. Perfect, Rick Rude, Ted DiBiase, Eddie Guerrero, Owen Hart, Chris Jericho, the British Bulldog. I can go on and on. But they're all B-plus players. They're not main event heels or main event baby faces. Like consistently over the course of months and years, it's just not them. That's just not the position they're supposed to be in. And that's the fact. When you look at the, 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 <laughs> when you just look at it, it's just, you can tell that there's a stark difference between a main event heel that is an A plus main event heel, you know, who can draw no matter where you put him, no matter what territory, no matter where he goes, you can put him, he's in the main event. He should be versus somebody who he's going to be on the card, but he might be in the fifth match sometimes. Might be in the third sometimes. Might be in the opener sometimes. He might get a main event here and there. But he's not a consistent main event guy. And there's a lot of those guys. And a, a lot of those guys are really good. But they were not A players. A players or A plus players. So you should rip the guy for saying that people only... Talk about Eddie because he died. That's bullshit. Eddie had a huge fan base before he died. But I can tell you that in the moment when he did win the title, there were people who were kind of like, what is this? And it's and same thing happened to Edge. I, remember, I, I think I maybe told that story on my channel before about, you know, telling Laps fans about Edge. And people would be like, the tag team guy? I'm like, yeah. It's a completely different performer today, but they're not going to see him as anything else. And then you can see how WWE treated Edge. They gave him the belt and then they took away from him almost immediately. And sure, he won the belt a bunch of times and he made it in some WrestleManias and stuff like that. And they kind of tried to build SmackDown around Edge. But, hmm. But Edge was pretty much a healthy upper A plus, upper B plus player, I should say. You know, he's not a Cena. So it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not worth, they're not saying that. Eddie is terrible or Eddie sucks. I think that's the that's bad. Absolute the worst opinion that you could possibly have is to say Eddie Guerrero can't wrestle or Eddie Guerrero was boring or stupid shit like that. But to say Eddie Guerrero is missing some of the ingredients that would take him from a B plus player to an A or an A plus player. No, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because there's a lot of people in his in, in that category that are just missing the ability to draw consistently in the top spot. You know, that's all. And or, you know, marketability in some other type of way, you know. But if you need Eddie Grell to be a top guy, he can do it without question. 
It's all about whether it can be consistently done, which it can't be. But you can do it consistently with Brock. You can do it consistently with Cena. You can do it consistently with Undertaker and Steve Austin and The Rock. You can't do it consistently with Eddie Guerrero. You can't do it consistently with Kurt Hanning. You can do it every once in a while, you know, but you can't do it consistently. Remember when they did the, the Goldberg, uh, Kurt Hanning match? You probably don't. <laughs> Goldberg was the world champion. You probably don't even remember that. That happened, I believe, the same week Goldberg won the title. Hogan took the L on Monday. And I think like six or seven days later, maybe six, uh, he wrestled Kurt Hanning in like the fifth match on the card or something like that. I mean, that's just that's just how it is, man. It's not a it's not a knock. It is to say your points per game, your rebounds, your steals, everything is worth you being on the team. If somebody goes down or people are burnt out on this guy, we'll bring you in. But and that's it. You know, people are getting burnt out on you know this guy. Okay, swing in Eddie. Swing in on. We need somebody to have a, a good feud with uh, Sean or whoever. Bring in Owen. Bring in Bulldog. You know, but you're not going to be the top guy, the centerpiece. That's just not going to happen. And that's really all we got to say. All right. Um, thank you guys for listening. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. All complaints need to be sent via email and put in writing. Otherwise, I probably won't. <laughs> I'm going to avoid it. Because I know this is about to be a shark pit of uh, people attacking me on like Twitter and stuff. Uh, kudos to the mad lad who said it. Because I know his, uh, I feel bad for his, uh, his mentions. And <laughs> uh, I feel bad for the guy's mentions. But um, I'll talk to you guys later. Tell me what's worse than learning all that you led to believe was all horse crap. They distort so question as if